Well, one of the great joys of hosting this program is the opportunity to talk about what God is doing in Western New York and Southern Ontario. And of course, the Toronto area is a massive metropolitan area. It's sort of the New York City of the North, and I don't mean to offend any Canadians who may be listening by that reference, but my point is um, it's a large area, and there are many ministries and many needs that exist in the area. One of the things we became aware of um, in the in Southern Ontario was that there's a growing number of pregnancy care ministries that have been flourishing, obviously because the needs are great, and one of those ministries that got started, I believe, in the Hamilton area is the Atwell Pregnancy Center. Um, now expanded into Oakville, and we're going to get a chance to hear about that as Lois Benham-Smith, the executive director, joins us. We'll also hear from some of her staff today, but we're going to hear about that ministry expansion. We'll hear about some of the things that God's doing to open doors for ministry in southern Ontario and about some ways that you can participate by getting involved. But let me first say welcome back to Lois, and it is very good to hear your voice again, Lois, and to have you back. How are you? I am well, thank you. And, you know, we really appreciate you, WDCX, Neil, and and the listening audience, because uh, you make all the difference in the lives of our clients as you um, pray for us and then also support us. So thank you so much. Yeah, and let me mention again, just off the cuff here, if anyone goes to the webpage, WDCX Radio, one of the things you'll see there is a, a a troubled young lady, or she looks like she's troubled, and she's looking at a pregnancy test, and it's just the word pregnant, question mark. The reason I'm pointing that out is because if any of you, Western New York, Southern Ontario, Niagara Region, Rochester, wherever you're listening today, if you know somebody who's pregnant unexpectedly, and are in need of connecting with a pregnancy care center, you can go and click on that, and the details will be there for how to connect with all of the ministries that we talk about and support here in MBL. And one of the ones I became familiar with a few years ago was the Atwell Pregnancy Center, and I had an opportunity to visit their office in Hamilton, but since then, there's been a major expansion. And so, Lois, I kind of want to lay out what we're going to be talking about today on NBL, who we're going to be talking with. We'll just do a brief overview, but also... To hear about this expansion, which is actually miraculous given we just came out of an international pandemic. So um, God's been doing a lot of stuff. And give us just a brief history here of Atwell, because obviously you guys are growing and God is working in powerful ways. So bring us up to speed. Yeah, well, well, last year we celebrated our 10th anniversary, and I mean, that in itself is a God moment. Um, 10 years in ministry in downtown Hamilton, as well as we opened up our second location in downtown Oakville, which is another total God moment, on on Church Street, and doing the same services that we do in Hamilton, which is um, all of our clients are seen with with registered nurses or social workers, and then... Um, yeah, just speaking into into their lives what their needs are. So, um, yeah, we're we're thrilled to be open here in Oakville, and then we also have our, our share program as well. And um, it's it's yeah. Now, okay, real really quick, great that, growth moments. That is sort of an educational arm of the Atwell Pregnancy Center. How do you describe it? It is. Um, so, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do back in you know as we opened was to be able to be. Uh, a voice for children and uh, teens and for parents to have healthy relationships. So SHARE stands for Sexual Health and Relationship Education. So it's a, it really enables critical thinking skills for mm-hmm. students and um, parents to have conversations around healthy relationships and, and all those things. So we go into okay. stu- schools, community groups, and churches. One of the things people always want to hear as well is what kind of impact is the ministry having? Is it actually touching lives? So when we talk to Carl Henderson, who heads up your SHARE program, we'll get a chance to hear some of those testimonies. I think you said we're also going to hear from a nurse today um, who's involved in the new office in Oakville. Is that right? That's right. Her name is Sue Pickering, and uh, she does the same work that we do in Hamilton, only here in our new location in Oakville. All right. And then there's an awful lot of folks that will hear what we're talking about today and say, man, God is truly doing something good and I want to be a part of it. And uh, one of your um, staffers there, Randy Lowe, who I've known for a number of years now, uh, contacted me about a month ago and said, hey, we're going to be doing a golf tournament this summer. I think, uh, Lois, we're going to hear from Randy a little bit later, if I'm correct, and we're going to have an opportunity to tell people about how they can get involved by supporting at well, and maybe even participating in the golf tournament. Are, by the way, are you a golfer, Lois? 
I am not a golfer. I get to <laughs> ride around in the cart and give out drinks and like okay. breakfast bars. So I get to cry. Okay. So it's all good. I'm just making it clear because I'm not a golfer either, but I try to golf. I just am not a golfer. It doesn't work well. Anyhow, um, we'll hear, hear from Randy Law, I guess, and I'm looking forward to that. But um, let's talk about the SHARE program, Sexual Health and Relationships Education. Is that what you called it? It is, yes. And okay. again, we go into the community and we do lots of great work. All right. Well, the executive director, or I should say the director of that portion of your ministry is Carl Henderson. I'll give you a second to describe him, then we'll introduce him to our listening audience. He's standing by with bated breath. But Car describe what Carl does, because when people think pregnancy care ministry, they're thinking about young women facing unexpected pregnancy and maybe ultrasounds or sonograms and that kind of stuff. But this is a very important part of what you guys are doing. Describe his work, and then we'll welcome him to the conversation here. Yeah, so we're this is an upstream part of our of our ministry, and we want kids to actually understand reproduction, like what's down there, the the plumbing of reproduction and anatomy and physiology. But there's a lot of other things that go as well as that. So we want them, we will talk about what is a healthy relationship, what does that look like. Um, we also talk about things like that they're having to decide on. We talk about. Um, sexting and pornography and we talk about um, you know boundaries and all of those things so that they can make some really thinking for themselves to make uh, a healthy choice in their relationships so that they don't end up with an unexpected pregnancy or a sexually transmitted infection or some things like that because they've thought through these things and and um, and made decided for themselves with yeah. support and with understanding all right, well, let me welcome Carl Henderson to the conversation. First time he's been on NBL, I believe. And uh, Carl, you're the director of the SHARE program. Do you have any experience in plumbing? I'm just <laughs> I'm I, I, I do not have any experience in uh, the, the plumbing, as you say. But um, I, I, I'm really good at talking about, you know, healthy sexuality and relationships. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, I got to just say this right at the beginning. This is a very powerful thing that you're doing carl because mm -hmm. over the years it's become painfully obvious to me that a lot of churches are not discussing this kind of stuff and by the way it's one of one of the reasons i love doing this program is because we get to talk about stuff that isn't widely discussed in the lobby at church it may be discussed on the back of the school bus the back seat in the school bus you know these things are being talked about but not always in the lobby at church and it isn't like churches have really always done a good great job maybe it's just you know, the embarrassment factor or whatever. But I mean, sex was created by God. It's a good thing, but there are boundaries. Yeah. And so I wanted to give you an opportunity from your perspective to describe the importance of the SHARE program, because it does put you obviously in schools with that. That's another matter, but in youth groups and in churches, and you're beginning to raise awareness on issues that need to be discussed mm -hmm. by all kinds of people. So yeah, go ahead and describe it from your own perspective. Yeah, 100%. It's exactly what you said. Like, just in general, <laughs> the church, uh, we don't talk about Bruno. Um, we yeah. don't talk about, you know, sex nearly enough or, or relationships nearly enough or dating nearly enough. Um, and I think that's because there's a lot of shame tied to those conversations. Um, and they can be awkward. They can be, um, you know, places where we don't feel the most comfortable because I, exactly what you said earlier, we forget that in the beginning God created and it was good. And so the whole narrative of the SHARE program is, and the mission of the SHARE program is that every student would understand their intrinsic value of themselves and of others. And so that word intrinsic, it, it, it speaks to like, what is the, a natural value? And so a natural value that's been given by someone else, by the Creator, by God, we, re we reclaim the narrative of, no, actually you were created in a beautiful image, not because the internet says so, but because the Creator God Himself says so and declares you to be beautiful. And that includes your sexuality. So the SHARE program, Sexual Health and Relationship Education, like we said before, we go into schools, community groups, churches, and we help develop critical thinking skills uh, in our youth around relationships. And we've shifted things from, we don't want to present presentations. We want to actually develop conversations because it's another problem. Like I'll, oftentimes we'll have like the birds and the bees conversation mm -hmm. and it's like a one of, and usually it's like, woo, all right, good. Check, got that done. Um, <laughs> instead of building actual like 
rhythms of conversation throughout um, the lives of, 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 of our young people um, so that they don't feel like this, that this is a, like a separate thing that's only supposed to be discussed in like a very specific or niche context or a youth retreat or, you know, the one time of the year where we do our, our purity sermon series. No, 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 no. We're, we should be having regular rhythms of conversation. So how does it go? Like, I mean, you get invited by a church or a youth group. I think we can kind of envision, you know, that you come in as a guest speaker and you do your thing and maybe you can talk about that. But in the public schools or in schools, um, that seems to me to be a little more, quote, uh, dicey, dangerous. I'm not sure. Just simply because, you know, if you're, I mean, you, you quoted Genesis there. And when you start mm-hmm. talking about the Bible outside the four walls of a church, mm-hmm in this current day and age that that gets a little bit iffy so how does that work so that's a great question it's it's so interesting that the the vision of the program like i said is that every student would understand and know the intrinsic value of themselves and of others and so that value that we that we're looking at is just this general thing that says every single person is worth respect every single person is worth dignity and that in and of itself opens up the conversation. And the fact that it's an intrinsic value begs the question, okay, where does that intrinsic value come from? And sometimes we can get into those conversations. But even public schools reach out to our program, um, even though we are a Christian organization, and we're in talks with a few right now because the, the issues and the problems that we're seeing young people face with consent, mm-hmm. not knowing how to behave with each other, not knowing you know that you, know, you can't just touch one another without permission or just talk about each other's bodies. Um, they're so inundated. I mean, like you said earlier, we just came out of a pandemic where these our young people have lost two years of their social maturity in, in, in their social maturity growth because they're at home. And where were they, were they when they were at home? They were on the internet. So they've lost a lot of just um, this, this, this curve of development um, where they don't really understand how to interact. And so I have even public schools reaching out and being like, man, we're really having issues with consent. We're really having issues with, you know, students Snapchatting and posting pictures of each other. Um, and our program speaks to, well, what is a boundary? What are healthy boundaries? What is consent? What is sexual harassment? How can we create a culture where we don't shame, you know, one another, but we actually elevate the conversations around sexuality and relationships so we can best respect each other in each other's space. And that is a, 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 an intrinsic principle that I don't, I've never heard pushback of like, you know, I don't think we should talk about consent with kids. I just don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> so people reach out to us all the time for those things. That's huge. Uh, let me throw something at you. It might seem like a, a really big question that probably deserves an entire program, but uh, what do you do about the like the rights and wrongs, for instance, of sexting? Do, do you get into that? Or even maybe a more important question is the dangers, because like some young girl sends a picture of herself to her boyfriend, inappropriate, yeah. you know, picture that is essentially out there in the digital world for anyone to see forever and ever and ever. And the, the regret that can go along with that um, the danger of, you know, connecting with the wrong person on the internet, of course, then you got pornography, which if you ask the average 13 or 14 year old boy who doesn't know the Lord, what he thinks about porn, he probably thinks it's really great, but you know, there's harm there as well. And then the whole STI thing, sexually transmitted infection. So, yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is that there's real dangers associated with some of these things. And do you get a chance to talk about that straight up? 100%. 100%. Like, to keep it very short and sweet, I let all of the students know that if you send an a, a image of yourself in performing a sexual act or, or that is nude in any way, that 100% falls immediately under the category of child pornography, which is a federal offense. And when I say things like this, um, they immediately snap to attention because a lot of times, because this is so normalized on TikTok, Snapchat, even Instagram, um, they don't understand that what they're doing puts them at a serious, serious risk. Um, and so we, 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 I just say it bluntly, just head on, educate them so that they can make the best decision. Um, and then I talk to you about, you know, the dangers of, you know, uh, porn consumption mm-hmm. and without understanding, 
you know, what that is and, and the intention of it and the, the effects that it has just on, on the developmental process. So, yeah, we, we address those things head on. So, Lois, what do you say about the importance of the SHARE program? And you alluded earlier that it's an important arm of your ministry and what's happening at Atwell Pregnancy Center in both Hamilton and Oakville, that you're, you know, kind of handling the Golden Horseshoe and the, what is it, the eastern edge of the GTA? I'm not sure. I'm not great with geography. But either way, you guys are doing important work. What are your thoughts about how this complements what you're trying to do at the Atwell Pregnancy Center? Well, again, it's a little upstream of our clients that we see where we hope so that we're not seeing the 16 year olds that are coming in because they haven't, they've just kind of feel like they've been coerced into a, into sex or something like that, but they've actually set boundaries. They've actually thought about consent. They've actually, and um, we do a correlation between emotional and physical intimacy. And so kind of getting kids to think about boundaries and all of these things preemptively. And so, uh, hopefully they won't, we won't be seeing them as an unexpected pregnancy or with an STI because they've set those boundaries early. And they're not going to be, you know, feeling the, the shame and the regret of sexting a picture or passing one around and then realizing, oh, my gosh, what did I do? I sent that and I could be facing jail time. I mean, you know, then those are the realities, right? So being able to educate our youth as well as critical thinking skills and also for the parents. Parents often don't feel equipped mm -hmm. to have these conversations, but society is having them with your kids. So we, and that's the equipping part that we do for our parents. We have a, a workshop for our parents too. It's a tough, it's tough being a parent. Sure. Absolutely. So. Carl, I want you to think the, about, the, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying to, to piggyback off of what Lois was just saying um, about um, understanding boundaries and the impact um, we there was a story that we just heard where there was a sixth grade girl who her friend was trying to show her some things on the internet and she didn't know what to do and her trusted you know person was her older sister and so she went to her older sister and said you know this is what my my friend's trying to show me these things I, I feel really weird about it what do I do and her older sister who's in eighth grade who has gone through our program said well you don't have to. Um, participate in any of that because you can have something called boundaries and begin to talk to her about what is a boundary, how to make a boundary. And so we have this amazing impact where now we're seeing um, the fruits of the program where there, there's this paradigm shift and understanding that no, 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 you can actually, you don't have to just go along with the flow. If you feel uncomfortable about something, you can make a boundary around it. And that's that is a massive win just for the SHARE program. Yeah, Carl, I, you know, we don't have a lot of time because we're going to need to talk to others, but I, I want to dig in just a little further and ask you, you know, when somebody says, hey, what do you do? And we we'll say, well, one of the things I do is I'm the director of the SHARE program at, you know, Atwell. And they say, well, do you mm -hmm. like it? Do you think it's making a difference? Immediately at that moment, a couple of thoughts pop in your head about, circumstances you've been a part of, conversations you've had, things you've seen. It's not unlike what you just described. And I wonder if you would take a second to describe just a few more incidences or conversations or things that you know that have happened that have been encouraging to you to say, Lord, I, I know that you've got me in the right place. I love doing this because I know you're working and here's proof. So um, help paint a picture for us of how God is using the SHARE program in addition to what we just heard, because that alone, that may have been enough right there. Uh, the fact that, you know, somebody knows to check with a trusted person and then set up some boundaries to protect themselves. But uh, what else would you add to that? Oh, man, I would. There was this one moment that I'll never forget. We were in an assembly. It was an entire ninth grade, so not just a, a class, but a full ninth grade. And I'm speaking from the front, and we're talking about the dangers of pornography, and we have a video that we talk about with, you know, that, that can lead to porn addiction. And I'm watching, and I can see, like, a, a disturbance kind of in the back, like a group of boys, and one is, like, tapping his friend on the shoulder. And this, this young man looks visibly upset, so he raises his hand, and whenever somebody raises their hand, I give them an opportunity, and I say, okay, what's, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, I think I have a porn addiction, and he's fighting back tears. Will you pray for me? Oh, wow. And I watch <laughs> as a young man in front of an entire ninth grade class 
has the bravery to be so incredibly vulnerable because he can see that there is actually a hope and a way of escape to get away from the struggle that he's having. Um, and I also see a bunch of his other male friends like patting him on the back and like just really supporting him as well as he does this incredible action of, of being brave in front of everybody. The everyone claps and applauds his bravery, and I say after the service or after the after the talk, um, yes, come up and we'll pray. He comes up, I pray for him. Um, we get him connected with his teacher. I check back about you know a couple of weeks later. He's doing great. He was actually like struggling with with some depression and, and feeling like really like his self worth was being attacked. And because of of that God moment uh, where he decided to step out. Wow. Um, and get help for what he was struggling with. Um, we've seen great change in this young man's life, and that is why we. This is this is why we share. That is incredible, and what you just described. If that happened on a more consistent basis in church settings, in youth groups, in church services, even people might say, "Well, how in the world would that happen in a church service?" Well, if churches were structured slightly different, where people mm-hmm. had an opportunity to confess their sins one to another. That's what it's talking about in the book of James. What we'd see is real healing. We'd see people get freed of things like what that young man was struggling with, a porn addiction. And we'd see the power of God in action as people began to minister to one another. And we realized that we're all broken, we all struggle, and that God's grace is sufficient. And I just want to say, Carl, keep up the good work, man. It is so encouraging to hear that you're involved in that kind of stuff and that there's no... Uh, there's no condemnation. It isn't. You're what? You're a porn addict? Are you kidding me? It's no. I mean, you're what you're watching. No. I think what you were seeing, right, is a person coming to repentance, to a place of repentance. And and all I know is that there's a party going on in heaven at that moment. And you got to witness it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a little jealous. Yeah, we just all, <laughs> all we do is we create and we facilitate safer spaces for these conversations to happen. Without the shame, without, and when we understand the reality that these, this is what our young people are dealing with. And so we don't shy away from them and say, like, no, this is the world we live in. So let's create a safer space where we can actually talk about it. And we just watch and sit back as God does, does amazing things. So All right. it's awesome. We're short on time. And Lois, I'm going to ask for your input. But yeah, the, isn't there a conference coming up? on May 6th or something? Yeah, exactly. I was just going to plug plug the, we have on May 6th, we have a plug, a plug, we have a, a share conference. It's our first ever share conference and it's um, for kids as well as for parents. So there's a track for parents, how to have these conversations and there's also a, a track for kids. It's different than what we do the presentations in schools and youth groups and stuff because there just wasn't enough time to present all this great information. So it's just another, it's an, another opportunity. And um, as well, we've, we've just this past year, we've launched a share podcast. So if you go onto our website, you can see under share, there's like a the podcast. And it, again, not enough time to be able to talk about all of these really um, important conversations that we need to have as parents and kids need to know about as well. Okay. And the website, it's, if I'm not mistaken, atwellcenter.org. Is that correct? Or is it at .ca? .ca. Yeah. Okay. Atwellcenter.ca. Spelled the Canadian way, C E N T R E. All right, so it's at well, like woman at the well, at well center, C E N T R E dot C A. And there's info there about the share, not only the share program, but the share conference on May 6th. Carl, anything? I know that you're going to actually be leaving us here in a minute to go do a share presentation, so we can't keep you much longer. But anything you want to say about that conference coming up May 6th? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be an incredible time and a great opportunity to talk about some things that we talk uh, outside of what we offer in our normal presentations. We're going to have local speakers. Um, for example, we're going to have a, a doctor. Her name is Dr. Amber McLeod, and she's going to be talking exactly what we were talking about before, about like, no, your, your body was actually designed not only for reproduction, but for pleasure, so we can talk about sexuality in a healthy way, um, in, in the way that God intended it. 
and also we're going to have a great talk uh, by Jackson Thune. He's going to be talking about the climb back to healthy masculinity, um, giving young men opportunities to create boundaries for themselves, because if they can have strong boundaries for themselves, they can have strong boundaries with others, and uh, looking at like what masculinity looks through the lens of, from a biblical perspective. It's going to be amazing. So highly recommend it. There's that, those are just two out of the all the other wonderful talks that are going to be happening, um, really encourage everyone to come out. It's going to be, I believe, a very impactful spirit, spirit-led time. All right. Well, if you want a biblical understanding of why we were created and how we were created and how the plumbing works <laughs> uh, and solid information about how to discuss these things with your own children, learn more by connecting with the SHARE program. At, at the Atwell Center, and you can do that by going to Atwell Center, C-E-N-T-R-E dot C-A. Carl Henderson is the director, and, of course, he'll be a part of that special event on May 6th. But, I mean, you can have Carl come to your church, your youth group, your school, and speak about these things. Any, any last thing you want to share, either of you? I mean, even though we're in Canada, um, I do Zoom presentations, so... That's that's great. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you might be able to connect via Zoom as well. Okay, well, we'll take a break here. Carl, thank you for being with us. God bless you. Safe travels, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon. Uh, Lois Benham-Smith is our guest. She's the executive director of the Atwell Pregnancy Centers in Hamilton and Oakville, and there's a lot more to talk about, including how God is ministering to young women facing unplanned pregnancies. We're going to hear some of those stories when Sue Pickren joins us. She's a registered nurse who actually heads up the Oakville facility, their brand new facility at Atwell. So we'll get to all of that as NBL continues here on WDCX. Today's program brought to you by Christian lawyer Leslie Smith. We get to talk about this important stuff because of the support of these folks, and I just want to say thank you to Leslie Smith, a Christian lawyer who happens to be an expert in employment law. She serves all of Southern Ontario, and we'll be back with more of the conversation right after this. Well, we're back to it, and I'm grateful that you're listening to the conversation here with Lois Benham-Smith, the executive director of the Atwell Pregnancy Center. When I first met Lois, and in fact, my first experience with Atwell was touring the center in the Hamilton area, and then about six months ago, and all of this, remember, on the heels of COVID, they were able, by God's grace, to open a second facility, this one in Oakville, right there on the edge of the GTA, and uh, Sue Pickren is the director of of the Oakville Center, so we're going to get a chance to meet her in just a minute. But Lois, pretty miraculous, really, if you think about it, that on the heels of COVID, by God's grace, you've been able to open the Atwell Center in Oakville, which I hear is a beautiful facility. You've been open, what, three or four months? I'm not sure exactly how long you've been at it, but um, this is a huge addition to your ministry. So tell us a little bit about the establishment of the Oakville Center. Yeah, so we are. This is just such a God moment because uh, we always wanted to have a, a second location in the Burlington, Oakville, Milton area, and um, and like you say, on the heels of COVID, actually in COVID, we went into our medical system, We went went into a medical framework of care, and but always wanting to have uh, an office in Oakville. So. Um, just we're doing what we do in Hamilton now here in Oakville and we opened up in October of 2022 and on our 10th year anniversary and we have been ministering since since October and just seeing such a need here in the um, Halton area same need here in Halton that there is in the Hamilton area big population here too um, between the two cities four cities so Georgetown and Milton also are part of the Halton region and then we're also to your point we're um, west um, Toronto area, so Mississauga, Brampton aren't too far away, and just you know, really wanting to um, service, give us the same service here that we have in Hamilton. Yeah, it's funny you say the western side of Toronto because I said maybe it's the eastern side earlier. You're right, you're right. Yeah, it's the western side. You're way better at geography than me. But let me uh, yeah. let me welcome Sue Pickering to the conversation because Sue, you head up the Oakville office of the Atwell Center and. I guess maybe one of, first of all, welcome, but my question to you would be um, to not just say welcome, but how necessary do you think it is to be in Oakville? I get the impression that this was desperately needed. What do you have to say about that? 
Hi, Neil. Yeah, thanks so much. It's, it's nice talking with you. Um, I definitely d- did see the need here. Um, and although our office is here in Oakville, we have received um, clients from all over, from Burlington, Milton, Mississauga, Brampton, um, and, and even from Toronto as well. Um, definitely a need here, um, as we saw in Hamilton. And um, we we hit the, the ground running when we opened up and had clients right away. So uh, it's been a it's it's been eye opening and it's been a great experience. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed being here. The the Atwell Center follows. I don't know if the terminology is right, so correct me, Sue, if I'm wrong. But a medical model, meaning that um, this isn't just talking to people about you know the how to deal with unexpected pregnancy, like from a biblical perspective, which is I'm sure part of your conversation that you bring the Lord into these conversations. But you guys are doing ultrasound sonogram. I'm not sure the difference between the two, but it's words that people recognize. And uh, even the STI clinic, I think is a part of what you're doing. Describe the medical part of all this. For sure. Yeah. Once uh, we opened up, we started off opening our medical in Hamilton and then uh, we, we also are doing this same model here in Oakville. Um, so what that means is that we have um, registered nurses on staff now that meet with each of their clients and that uh, has given us the opportunity to um, see clients at a different level. And uh, as you said, we are able to do uh, point of care ultrasounds. In, in that, what we're doing is we're looking at three different things uh, for to give the, the woman a little more information. The, uh, a woman who's facing an unplanned pregnancy, we're giving her information about the location of the pregnancy. We can see that through the ultrasound, making sure it's within the uterus, not in a danger zone like the fallopian tubes mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, we're also looking uh, for fetal cardiac activity to see the viability of the pregnancy. And then we do some measurements to give the woman a better understanding of just exactly how far along her pregnancy is. And she's able then to use that information in, um, yeah, knowledge is power and, and using that information to, to equip her for making the decisions ahead. Um, as you said, too, we also are doing STI testing, which is something we can do with a medical model with our registered nurses. Um, so th- the same demographic of, of people that can possibly have an unplanned pregnancy mm-hmm. can also have an STI. And so prior to our, our medical model, we would, uh, would have been counseling clients who came in with, uh, pregnancies to, um, to be sure to go and get tested for STIs as well. Uh, we saw that need and we've been able to meet that now here within our, our clinics and we are able to do the STI testing for our clients. That's um, huge. And, and yeah, it is huge and it's, it, it means there's no delay in treatment for anyone who does have a possible bacterial infection. We can treat those right here on, on the spot. And um, it's definitely, it's, it, it is kingdom work as well. Lord, uh, the Lord has given us uh, work to do here and, um, and the, ability to do it he's he's prepared us for these things and Hmm. it's opened up a lot of conversations with our clients we we talk not just about their physical and sexual health but also emotional health mental health and uh spiritual health and how all of those interrelate um uh, into whole person care i've heard it said um, by experts in this field and i believe you're one of them but that when women see the image of their baby on an ultrasound, it, it's kind of a game changer in terms of where the conversation goes from there because women begin to realize they're actually carrying a human being. It's not just a blob of cells or tissue. And I mean, if they hear the heartbeat, et cetera, is there truth to that? Do you think that's accurate? Um, I do believe so. Again, um, our, our care here is very client-led, so we are providing them with information as, as they want um, to have that information provided. And the point-of-care ultrasound definitely uh, gives them more information and helps them to see what is true. And just in the same way as if I broke um, a leg, I would want to see my x-rays. Uh, this is uh, something going on within my body. I would want to see what's going on. Um, I can think of specifically even uh, one of our 
clients who that made a huge difference for. Um, I can call her Hannah. And she came here to Atwell in Oakville and she sat down on the couch in, in our support room here. Mm-hmm. And you could really just see the burden of what she was carrying. It was just so evident. And it was here for the first time that she was able to unload the events of the last week that she had been carrying alone. Um, as we went through the intake, Hannah opened up about how she and her boyfriend had been making plans for a future together. Um, but when she took a home pregnancy test, she and her boyfriend um, discussed it. She told him of the positive result, and she wasn't prepared for his response. He told her that she had to get an abortion or else their relationship would end. Um, she, she, Hannah told me she didn't really want the abortion, but in order to maintain the relationship, she had been considering it. So when we talked about all her options, including uh, abortion, adoption, and parenting, um, as well as the sports that uh, Atwell could offer, we then um, I then offered her a a point of care ultrasound to give her that more information, and she agreed to that. So she asked Hannah asked to watch the screen while I completed the assessment, and uh, once those measurements were complete, she wanted a closer up view of what was inside the gestational sac. And she was really surprised to see that it wasn't a mass of cells, as her boyfriend had described it. Um, instead, she saw a head and a body with small limbs, and she could even see the heart beating in the middle of the screen. Mm. So we discussed um, those results, and she said that information really it made it clear to her that she would be caring to term and she would be parenting. Um, so she, Hannah since told her family about the pregnancy and has their full support. And uh, we've arranged for some counseling to help her um, deal with the hurt that she was going through. And also, we've been able to provide her with other resources. And sometime this coming May, Hannah will be delivering her baby boy. And I can't wait to meet him. It's incredible. You brought tears to my eyes yeah. with that story. Uh, you got me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's yeah. amazing because hundreds of thousands of women around the world, maybe millions every year, terminate pregnancies. And maybe people think that's no big deal. Oh, they just, you know, go take care of the problem and get on with their lives. But a lot of women suffer guilt and anxiety and shame afterwards. Many are coerced or are, you know, kind of forced into abortion by parents or boyfriends or or sometimes even husbands who say, there's no way we're having another child. There's no way we want this baby you're going to have to have an abortion. But when when a woman has a real choice and has the opportunity to connect emotionally with what she's carrying and see that, that that's a human life, many of these women will courageously choose life, which means they're actually having an option other than being forced into an abortion, that they might have an actual option to say, I want to, I want to parent this child, I want to carry this to term, or maybe carry it to term and, and place this child in a loving home for adoption. So... What's interesting is that you're, in a sense, providing women with real choice, real choice, to be able to choose what's right for them and for their baby, and I just want to commend you on that. Uh, any other stories stick out in your mind? We've only got a few minutes here, but I wanted to give you a chance to, to, to just share any other story. That one, I believe, cannot be topped, but who knows? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've been at this for a while, and I get the sense just from the tone of your voice, Sue, that you really enjoy what you're doing, so... Uh, Oh, I yeah. do. God's given us some amazing opportunities here. And and even with our um, our clients who come in for SDI testing as well, we, we get amazing opportunities there. I think that's where I see a lot of people really open up, I think, because they're opening out with us about their, their sexual health, that they feel um, open enough to then talk to us a, a little bit more. I'm thinking about um, another client even who I, I'll just I'll call her Sammy. Um, she came into Atwell for just for STI testing, um, but she had just come out of a 20-year marriage um, and had recently found out that her husband had been having numerous affairs over the past couple of years, and that uh, had put her at risk for contracting STIs, and that's why she was here to see us. Mm. Um, so we talked to our clients about different aspects of their health and how those interact with each other. Uh, we go through their health history, and we talk not only about their physical health, but also their mental and emotional and spiritual health, as we were saying, and how those all relate to each other. Um, Those discussions are very client-led, meaning um, that they know they can decide uh, what they want to discuss or not to discuss. 
but oftentimes I do find that the spirit is also leading those conversations as well. Um, and that was, uh, it was evident during Sammy's health intake that her mental and emotional health were affecting her physical health. Um, and then we went on to discuss her spiritual background and she had, um, she had said she, she grew up in the church. Um, she remembers some bedtime prayers and that sort of thing, but, um, she was, she then opened up and said that she was, had recently been thinking that she needed God to help her through this really difficult time. And she just wasn't sure where to start. Mm -hmm. And she was feeling guilty for walking away from God for so many years. So we chatted more about this and, uh, Sammy remembered the parable of the prodigal son and how he had a whole speech ready to give his father when he came back home. But then we talked about how the father went running to the son and re- returned to the, uh, to the son before the son could even get all the words out. His father was making preparations to, to celebrate that return. Um, and so Sammy had asked uh, where she could get a copy of a, a Bible so that she could read that parable again. And we were able to provide her with the Bible that day. Mm. And By the end of that appointment, we had not only cared for her physical needs by providing her with information and STI testing, but we were also able to refer her for some counseling to help meet her mental and emotional needs, and we were able to provide her with the Bible, and I was able to pray with her, uh, pray together during that appointment as well. And when she returned the following week for her results, um, she told me she had already read through all four Gospels, and she was preparing to go back to her her childhood church. Uh, the, the next Sunday. Wow. So she knew she had a, a lot of healing still to do, but she said she felt that God was um, with her on this journey and she wasn't really feeling alone anymore. So wow. we get amazing stories. And, and all that came out of, you know, an STI testing appointment. Um, but God can take those and do mighty things with it. It's so good. Well, Lord, I just pray for Sue and her staff and the others that work with her there in the Oakville office of the Atwell Center. And also we pray for the staff in in Hamilton and for Mm -hmm. pro-life and pregnancy care ministries everywhere, Lord, where these important conversations are happening. And Lord, we know this woman's name isn't Sammy, um, but you know exactly who she is. And I just pray that you'd surround that young woman with your grace and your love and your mercy and that you would continue to draw her nearer to you as she learns to walk with you and trust you in her life and in her situation. And I thank you for the treatment that she received. Uh, Lord, I thank you for Hannah, who was mentioned earlier, and for the decision, the courageous decision she made to parent that child, to to carry it to term, um, and to do what's right for the baby inside of her. Lord, these are amazing, miraculous decisions. And this is the kind of work you've been doing through the Atwell Center, and we thank you for that. So God, continue your blessing and provide your favor uh, as as more and more women come to be served in both Hamilton and now also in Oakville, where Sue heads up that part of the ministry. And so, God, uh, thank you. We praise you, and and we rejoice together with what we're hearing. We're we're part of the celebration, Lord, that happens Mm -hmm. once the prodigal comes home. And thank you for letting us be a part of that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, Sue, appreciate you sharing. Lois, real quick, we're going to have to take a break. This is the very kind of thing that I know that people want to be a part of supporting. Um, You must have a donation button or something on your page at Atwell Center, C-E-N-T-R-E dot C-A. Is that right? We do indeed, and uh, we appreciate um, prayer. You know, we really appreciate the the fact that people are praying for this ministry and praying for our clients. And then, obviously, we got to keep the lights on and pay our staff. So, you know, supporting us financially is also very key, too. So we appreciate everything that... um, you know, our, our partners give us. So, um, yeah, we're, and again, God moments. I mean, we just see God, you know, <laughs> year after year and I was, like thousands of people now that have come through the center, like between Hamilton and Burlington, like uh, yeah. I mean, Oakville. So it's, I get God, right? so really cool. moved by these stories that I get a chance to hear periodically. You get to hear about this stuff every single day. And Sue, thank you for sharing those stories. And I know there are many others. Maybe we can talk about some more in the future, but Appreciate uh, your part of the conversation here, and we'll look forward to catching up again sometime soon. Great. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. We're talking about the Atwell Pregnancy Center. Started out in Hamilton, Ontario, but also now expanded about six months ago to the Oakville area. And how exciting is that? You can learn more about their work and the STI 
uh, clinic and uh, all of the ultrasound and, and medical uh, information that they're providing and the assistance they're providing, also the SHARE program, or you can just learn more about the ministry so you can pray more effectively and perhaps give to what God is doing at the Atwell Center. Go to Atwell, A-T-W-E-L-L, like the woman at the well, Atwell Center, C-E-N-T-R-E, We'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. Today's program brought to you by Teresa and Christine at Vine and Williams. All right, as we continue the conversation here, we're going to add Randy Lowe to the conversation. He's a gentleman that actually met here in Western New York a number of years ago. And um, he came up to me. He said, have you ever been to the Atwell Pregnancy Center? Do you know about it? It's in Hamilton, Ontario. Well, that was my first inkling that... Atwell even existed, and later Lois Benham Smith invited me to come and have a tour of the Atwell Center, and became familiar with what they were doing, and was just absolutely so blown away by how organized they were and how well they were serving women facing unplanned pregnancies and the families affected by all of this. So I'm grateful, Randy, that you gave me the opportunity to get to know something about Atwell, and of course, since then you guys have expanded to the Oakville area. And now you're on staff. So <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Randy, how are you? Neil, I'm so good. And it's been far too long, my brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's nice to have you with us. And Lois, um, Randy has come on staff, obviously, to help with promotions and whatever. I don't know his official title, but how do you describe Randy's role at the Atwell Center? Yeah, so he um interacts interfaces with our churches here and because we're new into the halton area as well as businesses we have um some major fundraisers which randy's been instrumental in helping and one of those things is our golf tournament which is happening soon yeah and i want to talk about that there are a couple of things coming up we've heard some incredible testimonies today a lot of information about the work that's being done at atwell and how it's impacting lives not just physically but also for the kingdom people coming to faith in christ Randy, that's got to be pretty exciting that you have a role in all of this. Um, you contacted me about a month ago and said that you had a golf tournament coming up. We wanted to let people know about. So let me give you the floor here and, and tell us what's happening on June 8th, because this is going to be big. Thanks so much, Neil. Yes, I'll do that, and I'll, I'll try and speak pretty quickly. And two quick notes. One is this same event last year was instrumental in giving us the funding to open our new halted location in downtown Oakville. So... Hmm. This is actually the the third time we're doing a golf tournament, second year in a row. Um, and real, real quickly, I'll just tell you about uh, sort of the uh, the logistics for that. It is Thursday, June 8th. It's an early morning start. It's not a full day. So for those that have to get back to their desk, that's possible. Um, men and lady golfers, welcome. It's a, um, a short course. So it's a, sort of a forgiving course, if you like, a New Testament course, very forgiving. <laughs> Open <Hallelujah>. fairways. <laughs> yeah. Open fairways, not too many um, hazards. And um, therefore, any kind of a golfer is going to be comfortable on that day. And your fee includes a whole bunch of things, but includes obviously your green fees, your cart, a breakfast, a barbecue lunch, a nice little swag bag with a golf towel, and multiple contests and awards. So uh, more importantly, a great day of fellowship to support a great cause under the canopy of God's creation. Yeah, now, you might have said this already. I was distracted for one second, but is where is the course? You're playing where? So the course is at the Carlisle Golf and Country Club. That is uh, uh, sort of in between you and us, I suppose, uh, just north of, of Waterdown. People in southwest Ontario would know that location very well. It's a beautiful course, and um, it should be uh, it should be just a fantastic day. And again, it's it's an early start, an 8 a.m. start, kind of a scramble, or other people use the term best ball format, meaning that again, um, and any kind of a golfer can go out and have a good time. If you happen to hit one good shot, they'll use it, and uh, you'll feel like you were a part of the whole thing. <laughs> it's unreal. You know, those are those are fun tournaments because they're not they're not super amount of pressure on anybody and no one's supposed to feel pressure anyway this is to benefit the atwell uh, pregnancy center so that event is coming june 8th i gotta believe that you must have something some kind of a link on your web page to be able to register you know we do and for everything that's been mentioned the share conference uh our formula for hope campaign lois is just going to mention a second here 
everything to do with that well you can just find it at welldentcenter.ca so one stop shopping for anyone listening but just as a final note you know not only do we need uh, support in terms of golfers we'd love any interested small business owners for sponsorships we're looking for volunteers and as always and, and this is not a trite request but we we appreciate and value uh, the prayers of the saints as well so we're excited and uh Neil, it'd be great great to have you join us, but I know your schedule's chocker block. <laughs> well, I'm going to see if I can carve out some time. It sounds like a lot of fun. Thursday, June 8th at the Carlisle Golf and Country Club uh, special golf tournament to benefit the Atwell Pregnancy Center. You can sign up by going to Atwell Center, C-E-N-T-R-E, the Canadian way, atwellcenter.ca. Um, and there are other opportunities to give, uh, and I want to encourage anybody that, you know, if God moves you on your heart, Say yes and do what God's showing you to do, and you'll get to be a part of what God is doing in sparing lives and bringing people into God's kingdom through the work of the Atwell Center in both Hamilton and in the Halton region in uh, right there in downtown Oakville. So, uh, Lois, I've heard about the Formula for Hope campaign, the Baby Bottle campaign. There's a couple other things. Any, anything you want to mention about that aspect of the ministry and how people can support you? Yeah, sure. Uh, our baby bottle campaign we've been doing for the last 12 years, and it starts on Mother's Day, ends on Father's Day. In the past, we've had physical baby bottles, and we have a few of those this year, but a lot of it is virtual baby bottles. So if you want to fill a baby bottle with you and your family and friends or church, uh, we'd more than be grateful for that. Uh, you know, it's filling a baby bottle, even if it's virtual, is a good opportunity to talk as a family and with your friends about mm -hmm. who, when life begins and who can take it away and what that should look like. So it opens up, again, these critical conversations that we think our kids know, oh, well, it, what it means like to be, um, you know, pro-life, if you will. You know, but really, who, when does life begin? And those are really interesting, good conversations to talk to your kids and grandkids about. Yeah. And again, on the other end of the spectrum, who takes it away? Well, and I, it's a really good organic way to talk about these things and amen. To help us out. Yeah, and Mother's Day to Father's Day is a pretty meaningful time, especially when yeah. you're talking about human life. And if you want to learn more about any of that, again, go to atwellcenter.ca. But Lord, bless the ongoing ministry of the Atwell Pregnancy Center. We thank you for the miracles we've heard about today, the testimonies. We thank you. For each and every staff member and volunteer, and Lord, we pray for those who are listening right now who may be moved by the Holy Spirit to say, I want to be a part of something like this. I want to pray for this ministry, maybe get personally involved, and perhaps become a part of the support team to help uh, the Atwell Center exist and flourish. And whether that's as individual givers or sponsors of the golf tournament or golfers or however you lay that information on the hearts of our listeners today, Lord, we pray for responsiveness and obedience. Show us what it is we can do to support the Atwell Pregnancy Center. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, atwellcenter.ca, Lois Benham-Smith, thank you, and Randy Lowe, thank you, and of course, Sue Pickren and Carl Henderson for joining us earlier. But you guys have been a blessing. We'll look forward to hearing more from you in the days ahead. Keep, keep up the good work, and God bless you in, in your calling and endeavor uh, to help save human lives. We appreciate you guys very much. Well, thank you, Neil, for, again, your partnership with WDCX and, you know, really appreciate your, your listening audience, too. So um, always a pleasure. Amen. Very much a pleasure. We'll be back with more of NBL right after this from Toronto's premier Christian real estate broker, Nicola Brandes.